Hi, and welcome along to a little video podcast on the crucial concepts of work and energy. So let's have a think about what you might know uh, about this topic already. And of course, you might not actually know all of it. And some of this is just just a recap. So you might know that energy is measured in joules. And one of the things we're going to definitely establish in this video is what we mean by a joule. And then we can have a think about some examples about um, where we might um, consider energy. Um, for example, um, you, you might say, well, um, if I have um, a mug of tea and it's steaming away, that's got some thermal energy. And that thermal energy is in the kinetic energy of the particles uh, vibrating I I inside. If we could look into the liquid, we would see lots of little particles and they would have kinetic energy as they vibrate on the spot. And that heat energy is dissipating out into the room, it's spreading out into the room uh, and kind of getting weaker. And you probably, well, hopefully you had breakfast this morning and your breakfast, whatever it was you ate, is a supply of chemical energy. And that allows you to generate heat energy and kinetic energy um, and to drive chemical reactions in your body. So it's a really useful universal concept, always measured in joule joules but we, re we really need to think about what do we mean by one joule and it turns out that this is all defined by something called work done which you may have met in GCSE physics and work done is equal to force times distance so let's just work through a really really straightforward example of that let's imagine that the minimum force needed to li lift an object is three newtons and we're going to lift that object through a vertical height of four meters. Um, how, much, how much work was done in that process? Now, I, I want you to pause here and work it out. You probably do it in your head. But if we just get into that habit of uh, making sure we do the questions as we go along, just like we would have done if we'd uh, been in class. So you're getting a little bit of practice as we go along. So we've just got four times three, and that is... 12 joules okay there is a little catch we have to make sure that the force and the distance moved through are parallel and if we think about what 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 is one joule is one newton multiplied by one meter so the work done moving a force of one newton through a distance of one meter gives an energy of one joule and whether we're talking it working in another science subject or geography you know we weren't thinking about um maybe you buy a bulb and it's a 30 watt bulb which is 30 joules per second each joule in the end is defined in that same way as one newton by one meter these are the new new units of force newtons these are the units of um distance meters um you could, in theory, write it as newton meters, but you'll see later we use newton meters or something else, and that would be potentially confusing. Okay, let's just uh, try a different example. It, it introduce the um, idea of rearranging as well. So let's imagine we're trying to drag a block, and we need a block, a force of 50 newtons to drag our um, block along the flat. And we want to know what distance d can we drag that block um, if we're using, uh, if we have a store of energy, if our energy available is 300 joules. Now, I'm hoping a lot of you will just be able to pause the video here and just work out the answer. If you need a little bit of a hint, you can stay with me and then pause and do the maths. So we go back to our equation. Work done equals force times distance. And there are different ways of approaching this. We could rearrange. Uh, and then substitute, but in, on this instant, I think it's often easiest, we're going to substitute and then rearrange. So the total work we can do is 300 joules because we've got 300 joules of energy available. The force is 50 newtons, and we've now got to find D, the distance. So you definitely need to pause now if you haven't got an answer already. You did pause, didn't you? We've got to get that good habit. What's the answer? Come on, tell me. Right, so rearranging D equals 300 divided by 50. Um, 300 divided by 50, where well, you can cancel, so there is six metres. We could drop, draw the block, drag, drag the block six metres. Hope you found that useful. And uh, you can have a go now at some of the questions on the worksheet. 
Okay, now we're gonna have a quick think about no work done. And this is back to this idea that um, I said that when we um, picked up an object, um, I think we had a force of uh, three newtons moved through a distance of four meters, that the distance moved and the force needed to be parallel when we're calculating this equation. So work done equals force times distance only applies if these two things are parallel. So let's have a look at a little look at an example where that doesn't apply. So here's a table. Let's imagine it's kind of a very low friction surface. We're going to go for our same object. There's a force of three newtons acting down and we're now going to move it four meters sideways. Now, if you think about what we might have been talking about energy conservation at school, here, as we lifted the object, we did work and we increased its potential energy. We haven't done that here, have we? The object is still the same distance from the ground, so its potential energy hasn't changed. So if we can slide an object with no friction, maybe it's like on an air hockey table from, from one place to another with no friction, you can see that the weight, the force, is at right angles to the displacement, the, the, you know, how it's moved sideways, and therefore the work done is zero.